Trying to understand a piece of software can be daunting. Where do you start? If you're talking to someone who already understands the whole thing, how do you ask the right questions? Note, if you're finding the images small, you can make the video full screen by clicking in the bottom right corner here. That'll work even if the video is embedded in another website. The MVC, or Model View Controller Framework, gives us a simple framework for this purpose. I'll describe it, and then we'll go through a few examples. We'll start with the model. The model is where your data lives. The model might be a simple file, like an Excel file or an XML file, or it might be a database with many different kinds of records. The key thing you want to do when you're designing a model is think in a structured, relational way about the real-world entities you want your models to describe. It doesn't matter whether those things are waste treatment plants, the human hand, or a skyscraper. The same things apply. Two key terms that will help you here are HAZA and ISA. HAZA means that something, a dog let's say, has a something else, tail in this case let's say. ISA means that a dog, we'll go back to the dog thing, is some more general class of thing like an animal. A dog is an animal. Moving on, we now have the V in MVC, which is, you got it, the view. The view is what you see as a user. It's probably the most intuitive component. In the case of Microsoft Word, the view would be a blank page. In the case of Facebook, a user's wall. Or in the case of Angry Birds, it would be a montage of flying birds. Creating simple views that users love is deceptively complex. It's the domain of user interface designers, but one tip I can offer you is to stick with successful patterns that have worked in comparable situations unless you have a compelling reason to do otherwise. So look at interfaces elsewhere that you think have the same functional requirements as yours, and that's a really good starting point to get ideas. Obviously, don't violate anyone else's copyright or IP while you're doing that. We have the controller, which is the smarts in the program that tell it what to do. When you log into Facebook, there's a controller that takes the username you supply, finds you in the system, and checks whether you supplied the right password. Controllers have an input, in this case that's a username and a password, and an output, here from the user's perspective, that's either an AOK -OK or an error message that says bad password, something like that. Your programmers will be implementing the controllers, but it doesn't hurt to think through what a controller does. Let's go through an interaction using the MVC. Back to the Facebook example, the first thing you do when you look at this view is supply your username and password. And this is a pretty typical first step in an MVC transaction. A user supplies inputs to the controller by way of the view. I'm going to log into Facebook as my alter ego, Zila Nawak. I have a username here, I put in my password, and I log in. And this is step one of the process where the user supplies inputs to the controller by way of the view. In the next step, the controller has to figure out what to do with regard to this username and password. Log the user in, right? It seems simple, but when you think about it, there are actually a few steps, even in the simplified version. First, the controller needs to see whether it can find this username in Facebook's directory of users. That's marked here as A. And what part of the MVC is the directory where this username would live? If you said the model, that's right, because it's a place where data lives. If the controller does find the username, it'll proceed. If it doesn't, it'll post back an error message. The second step is to check the password. If it's correct, the controller then pulls the information from the system for this particular user, and third step, displays the login page for this user, the user's landing page in Facebook. I've supplied a correct username and password, so I see now the landing page for Zila Nawak, who I logged in as. Zila is my test user, an imaginary friend, so naturally if we looked at his profile, we'd see that he's liked my book, and we're friends on Facebook. And where does all that information about Zila live? That's right, it's stored in the model, and then it's requested by the controller, and displayed here in the view, so we can look at it. Let's talk through one more very general example before we knock off. Angry Birds, which is a game you've probably played on your iPhone or Android phone. In Angry Birds, the model would include various data elements, many of which you'd see rendered in the game images, layouts for the game, rules, the state of play for games that are in progress, things like that. The view, this is basically the game as you experience it. And the controller would include things like deciding how an angry bird flies through the air when it's catapulted, how it impacts the structures it encounters, things like that. A few notes on the MVC's history and current practice. It was invented by this gentleman here, we'll just call him TR for short, 
during a project at Xerox way back in 1979. Current practice around the MVC has changed some, and there are different ways that it's interpreted. The interpretation I presented here is a little bit simplified from the original. But unless you're actually implementing code with references to an MVC, you don't have to worry about these different interpretations. As long as you explain that what you mean by M model is where the data is stored, V view is what the user sees, and C controller is the underlying logic, you'll be fine. My book, Starting a Tech Business, describes the MVC in more detail in Chapter 3, along with a few other things you might find handy if you're developing or deploying technology products. Prior to that, in Chapter 1, the book describes how to formulate and test new ideas. Chapter 2 describes how to launch and subsequently manage the strategy for a technology business. Chapter 4 describes systems architecture, how multiple applications fit together to make a functioning system. Chapter 5 describes the different roles you'll need to staff and manage in a technology-enabled business. Chapter 6 describes best practices around technology development. Chapter 7 describes operational readiness with an emphasis on effective process design. And Chapter 8 describes how to scale a successful model. If you're interested in the book, check out www.alexandercowan.com.